Hi, I'm Dave Vickers and welcome to The Photo Show. In today's episode, we're looking at the fact that Nikon has announced the launch of their new flagship DSLR, the D6. Back around five months ago, I made a video around the fact that Nikon were looking like they were going to be announcing the launch of a new DSLR, the D6, sometime in 2020. Now at the time that video was made, there was little or no specifications on what this camera was actually going to be. Now somewhere during the night, Nikon have made an announcement that they are launching the D6 in April of this year, and they've given us the specifications of what the camera is actually going to be. First off, I thought what I'd do before we go into what the full specifications are, is I'd just do a comparison as to what I predicted it may be five months ago, to what the camera actually is now. Now before we start, I just want to say that I did actually get quite a few of these specifications wrong. And that's not because I overestimated what this camera was going to be. I thought I was actually quite realistic in what I thought the specifications for the D6 would contain. It actually turns out that I may have overestimated it, and this camera may not be what everyone expected the D6 was going to come out as. So to begin with, my first prediction in the video was that the release announcement for this camera would be in February 2020. And we're here on the 11th of February 2020, and we've had the announcement made. So got one right there, but that could be as far as it goes. The next prediction I made is that the D6 would have an improved sensor over the D5, somewhere between a 24 to 30 megapixel sensor. It actually turns out, it looks like it has exactly the same sensor as its predecessor, the D5, with a 20.8 megapixel sensor. Now, megapixels has never been the be all and end all of it, and a 20.8 megapixel full frame sensor is perfectly adequate. It's, it's a fantastic sensor, as proved in the D5. But it looks like the D6 has the same sensor as the D5, with a 20.8 megapixel full frame sensor. The next prediction I made was that the Nikon D6 would have dual XPeed 6 processors. Turns out I was wrong with this as well. It does have the latest XPeed 6 processor, but just a single unit within the camera. Now, ISO range. I predicted that the ISO range wouldn't change from the D5. I thought there was a possibility you could bring in the ISO capabilities of the D850, but turns out I was correct. The ISO range on the D6 is ISO 100 to ISO 102,400, which is exactly the same ISO range as you were getting on the D5. Shutter speed. I predicted that the D6 would have a maximum shutter speed of 1 8,000th of a second, and that turns out to be correct. I think there's a limit to the maximum shutter speed that you can achieve on a DSLR, where the mirror has to move out of the way between each shot. Frame rate. I was hoping that the D6 would improve rapidly on its frame rate. The D5 shoots at 12 frames per second, and I was hoping that the D6 would come in somewhere around the 20 frames per second mark. It does improve, but not by much. The D6 will shoot at 14 frames per second. There were rumours going around that the D6 might possibly have inbuilt image stabilisation, and I actually felt that wasn't going to be the case. It's not something that Nikon's done on their cameras before. They've always relied on the image stabilisation being contained within the lenses. And I was correct, the D6 does not have built-in image stabilisation. The next prediction I made was that the D6 would improve the autofocus system over the previous D5. Nikon are saying that the autofocus is better than it was on the D5, but they've reduced the amount of autofocus points. The Nikon D5 had 153 autofocus points, whereas the D6 has 105. And those 105 autofocus points are now grouped more centrally than they were on the previous camera. Video. Now I predicted that the D6 would shoot 4K video at 30 frames per second, very similar to that that you're getting on the D850. And that looks perfectly correct. It shoots 4K video at 30 frames per second. Now there's a lot of talk on the internet, especially with what Canon did with their 1DX Mark III, that the video specs on the D6 aren't good enough. I do wonder, it begs the question, is anybody who's got this kind of money to spend on a camera for video going to be looking at a D6? I don't even think it would be on their radar. I think they'd be looking much more at a video-centric camera over something that is specifically designed as a sports and wildlife stills camera. One of the other areas that Nikon are pushing with the D6 is its connectivity. It has built-in GPS, Wi-Fi, Ethernet connection, Bluetooth. So it's really geared for sports photographers to be able to get their images back to the press agency as quickly as possible. In this modern day, press agencies want to get the images up online ASAP. And the connectivity within the D6 will definitely help that happen. Finally, the last prediction I made about the D6 is that it would be the last flagship DSLR that Nikon produced. And looking at the specifications, I still believe that. I think this could be the end of the line for the professional 
flagship DSLR camera from Nikon. I think from now on, I think the, what's being offered with mirrorless cameras and the technology and the advances that are coming from mirrorless cameras, I think we're kind of pushing the limits with what DSLRs can actually achieve. Price-wise, now I predicted that the D6 would come in around the $7,000, $7,000 mark. And I was actually wrong on that. It's actually $6,500, so around £6,500 for the body only. Now, obviously, this is a massive amount of money, but these are professional tools. These are, these are not your cameras for everyday amateur users. The Nikon D6, the Canon 1DX Mark III, these are professional sports and wildlife cameras. And there are going to be a lot of comparisons made between the Nikon D6 and the Canon 1DX Mark III. Now, on paper, with all the specifications, Canon has Nikon beaten hands down. But ultimately, it's not really going to matter. These are designed for sports photographers. The Olympics are coming up in the summer and professional sports photographers are going to want the latest model to shoot the Olympics on. If you're a Canon shooter, it's highly unlikely that you were going to sell your Canon gear and switch over to Nikon before the Olympics. And vice versa. If you're a Nikon shooter, you're unlikely to look at the specifications of the D6 and say, that's not for me. Sell all your gear and switch over to Canon. I think that's highly unlikely. The other point is that there are going to be some incredible images coming out of the Olympics in the summer. I'll put money on that you won't say, that was definitely shot on a 1DX Mark III, that was definitely shot on a Nikon D6. It simply doesn't matter. It simply doesn't matter. They are tools for doing the job and the photographers will get the best out of these cameras. Specification wise, I agree, Canon has Nikon beaten hands down. If there's any professional sports photographers watching, please let me know. What do you think about this? Do you think that Nikon has not gone far enough with the D6? Or do you think they produce a viable replacement for the D5? Which, let's face it, is four or five years old now. And as a piece of professional kit, it's going to be coming to the end of its working life. So photographers are going to be replacing their D5s with whatever the next model is. But let me know in the comments below. I'd really love to hear what your opinions are on the new camera. So there we go. That concludes our look at Nikon's new release, the D6. It's going to be available to buy as of April. And I think they're taking pre-orders now if anyone really wants one. But for now, I'm Dave Vickers. This is The Photo Show. Thanks for watching. See you next time.